Hey guys, welcome back to Insecurity. I'm Crystal. And I'm Hey Friend. Hey. And we are jumping right into episode five of the season, right? Already. Man, we are flying right through. The whole shit season is in full effect. <laughs> Let's do this. And Issa is actually on her way to a dick appointment right now. And you knew by her smile that it was a dick appointment. Had to. Well, who I didn't, what I didn't know is who it was. I was surprised. Right. I was like, which is the neighbor bay? To see is Daniel it? at the door. Well, I knew it wasn't neighbor bay because she wouldn't be driving. <laughs> Shout out to being You're broke right. and doing that thing with the gas where you got to make sure you hit it exactly at like $9.50. Like, I'm not, I do not have more money than three gallons worth of gas. See, you know what? That's funny because I'm not a driver, so I didn't even peep that that's what was going down. Oh, yeah. No, I've done that so many times my train, in my life. My MTA ass was like, why is she doing that? I'm not been driving since I was like 14. So that whole gas struggle, I'm with you, Issa. But yeah, she pops right on up at Daniel's house and they doing the nasty. A kissing like they a couple when they open up the door. Right? Her whole little awkward special delivery routine with Daniel not playing along, being Sorry. ridiculous. It's like, it's Issa. Were you going to shoot me? Were you going to shoot me? <laughs> you have to sign for it. It's the package for your package. Handle with care. Or not. <laughs> I got a gun. It's Issa! <laughs> you know, I thought it was Lawrence's voice at first. No. And then I was like, is this a fucking fantasy segment? You right. know they do that? Ugh. I, I definitely it, thought it, it was going to be one of those. I'm like, damn, really? They be Daniel? catching me every time. But I know they was all hugged up after uh, Kiss and Grind, the day party. <laughs> <That> <laughs> I, know <name>. they was, <laughs> I know they bonded after Kelly started getting fingered at the table. But you know. <laughs> Can I just add that Ty, our editor, hit me and said that he's so clueless that he thought she was having a stroke in that oh scene. And he said God. he was all concerned, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Then he said when Daniel sent the text, he was like, yeah, I did not. She's not having catch a stroke. That. She's getting that stroke. <laughs> Shout out to Ty. <laughs> That's adorable. So, yeah, Issa and Daniel back together again, guilt free this time. So, right? you know, that's the way to be. Meanwhile, little Real Quentin and Molly are at the Chicago office. That's where he's based. And. Uh, Molly's cute. Molly's pleasantly surprised by the amount of melanin in the office. She didn't recognize T Boz. She didn't recognize the lawyer who looked like T Boz. <laughs> <laughs> and so Quentin is encouraging her to look at, you know, other firms necessarily, if not switching, you know, and moving to Chicago or somewhere else, just looking at other places because she's clearly talented and an extremely good attorney. So she doesn't have to put up with the bullshit that she's currently, you know, dealing with at work with yeah. Trevor and all that. And he tells her, just keep in mind that you have options. Yeah, you have options. And I know you're so stressed out that you have to keep a seat at the table playing in your car on the way to work <laughs> to and from every oh, that's day. That's <laughs> right. What do you say? Uh, the L.A. office reminded him of why he went why to he Howard. Why he went to Howard. <laughs> It's an old deal. <laughs> too real. Too right. Real. It's too real. So <laughs> shout out to Lil Real. Also, I think this was an ad-libbed line because the way Molly's character, the way, I'm sorry, the way Yvonne's, Yvonne started cracking up. It was like when he called himself sim, Slim Thick and said he had a past his body. You know that was an ad-lib. <laughs> I just felt it. I did too because she was like genuinely cracking up. She was fighting it like, no, you didn't throw she, that in there. At first she was acting laughing and then he said he had a past his body and she lost it. <laughs> Shout out to all the funny ass actors Man, on this show. Though. Yes, seriously, because that was golden. Past his bodies, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Shout out to the Midwest. Anyway, Issa and Daniel are watching Do North, the slave show with Regina King. That this everybody damn loves. Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much because Ness about to get uh, got fucking with Ninny's man. Somebody <laughs> trimming the trees. <laughs> Why do you remember the, the name Ninny's man? Because Issa, Issa said, oh, no, nah, Ness about to get got. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel's like, this show is so stupid, but clearly you watch it. As he looks up the TV, we are glued. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. How cute was their interaction, though? It was really, it was nice. I said, okay, I'm not mad at this, Issa. Whole faces usually mean, you know, not fucking around with people we fucked with before. Right. But no. I'm not totally mad at the way you handling it. They do the whole fake, you know, what you doing tomorrow? What you doing tomorrow? Right, where you about to go? Hey, nigga, you not about to do nothing. But she's leaving because, you know, she's committed to, to doing the whole part of it. No feelings, no cuddling. Hotation and rotation. So he's like, well, fuck it. I'm going to go get me something to eat there. And she's 
like, really? You pastrami gonna, tacos? You gonna go though? get pastrami tacos? I was like, with what? Them? I said, now that I have, I know, I know y'all eat That's a lot a of <laughs> different tacos on the West Coast. Not true, <laughs> true. But pastrami taco, Ain't I've never, never heard, heard of that. I mean, shit. I'm not even saying I wouldn't try it. I'm just intrigued, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know they have a cute vibe together so freaking cute this is a nice scene to see Daniel oh. and Issa just kind of getting along and, and Daniel you know, looking good Daniel looking oh he did the whole thing where he took her from behind and mm-hmm. kissed the back of her neck <laughs> I, had to, I had to turn away I said I, oh damn <laughs> I have gotten got like that before I was like I'm feeling feelings let me, <laughs> let me look let me look away right cause I'm definitely deep in no feeling season meanwhile <laughs> Lawrence is jogging with these white girls he works with now so. apparently they're prepping for a marathon yeah they're all friends and then he double checks his email to see if he get called for jury duty which he definitely did and so conveniently he will miss the meeting tomorrow where they pitch his app to their boss and I said see you messed me up for the scene cause I didn't even catch um, last time when you were like no why are you telling when they were drunk yes and he was telling you about his app and you were like that was stupid so now this setup I'm feeling that yeah. we're about to see some trouble he won't be there when they pitch it and my gut is telling me those white girls are gonna take him totally you out were of on. it you were on for that one I mean girl we'll see but I just said this is too convenient no they're setting it up it's too fucking convenient you know how white people do you got to keep your eyes on your shit <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile Molly took that whole Morocco suggestion gesture to heart she was like well listen bitch i've been on expedia <laughs> right i've been researching flights hotels all type of shit you know we can get it popping and so morocco looks like it's really going to be a trip for them and Issa's like well wait a minute sis let's let's remember that i'm broke like but i'm dead at them staying in different hotels <laughs> that is so real <laughs> you do you i do me yeah so they're talking about it while they get the flowers ready because her parents are going through with the vow renewal ceremony and they're turning into a whole big event. Really cute. The and flowers are hella pretty, too. Yeah, so cute. But Daniel texts Issa uh, right in the middle of it. And so Molly, of course, is doing the whole, who it is? Mm-hmm. And she does the smile and do it all mm-hmm. extra. Like, oh, bitch. <laughs> that little guilty caught smile. Up. Yes! Yes! <laughs> that little, I know I shouldn't be smiling at you this, but I'm going to do it anyway situation. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> so Issa admits, you know, she's been hooking up with Daniel lately and they're only having casual sex because she's really not on her feeling shit. She says, I'm even getting me a Latino. <laughs> she shows. <laughs> and I appreciated, I appreciated that they said Latino and not Spanish. Yes, me too. Because that gets on my nerves. Because that is really annoying. Spanish. <laughs> right. Spanish Thank is Thank you, Molly. country. <laughs> <laughs> Molly been to college. She said, oh, he's Latino. And then Issa does her C, bitch. The, I was like, no, I no. Said, no. <laughs> then she goes, that's racist. <laughs> like, that's why I'm free to mad at you now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gaines head ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all cool now? Wait, what you call him? The zit you had to pop. Oh, wait, was, was it a rash you had to put ointment on? You know what? We're fine. Okay, Daniel and I have history, and we always bounce back. Oh, so y'all can just be cool without catching villains? Yeah, we're friends who fuck. Okay, Daniel knows what it is. Plus, I told you, I'm not about this feeling shit right now. Listen, if you like it, I love it. Get yours. Oh, I sure the fuck will. <laughs> because I am all about, what? Putting niggas in my rotation. Oh, oh, we got, we got a rotation? Listen, I got Daniel. Okay. I got Neighbor Bay. What? And... I'm about to add a new one tonight. He Latino. See, bitch. <laughs> so she's hype about going out tonight with uh Mr. Latino Poppy. Yes, Nico. Oh, okay, yes, Nico. <laughs> oh, salt pepper ass nigga looking good <laughs> on Tinder. <laughs> Lawrence but is at jury duty while all this is going on. And they have a video playing in the background. Like, and it was the realest shit. I wish this was a real video because it was like... What do you think of when you hear jury duty? Do you try like, to come up with a lie to get out of it? <laughs> do you think about how you'd be making more money if you could just be at work? <laughs> I saw all oh, this show was been entirely too oh. real because I went to jury duty and had those same thoughts. <laughs> That's everybody though. Right? Doesn't everybody feel that way? <laughs> So he's bored, scrolling on Facebook like most of us do, and he comes across a video of Kelly eating peppers. Kelly, what the hell? Sis, what are you doing? What is this? (laughs) 
This it reminds YouTube, me, like it rem- YouTube challenge. It reminds me of the cinnamon challenge. Yeah, when people were trying to eat cinnamon, and everybody was like, "No, you'll die." Like, when Glozell was. <laughs> <laughs> So she starts chewing these peppers, and then of course she like chokes. He was like, "What the fuck?" He's is like, wrong "What the?" Fuck? <laughs> so he clicks on her profile, and she sees her picture mm. from the night after Kiss and Grind when he everybody's fell. at the restaurant. He saw Issa and Daniel together. He fell into the, the and stalking, immediately the he almost hole. he almost didn't hear his name called for jury duty. He was just like, "Wait a minute, I know that's not." That same nigga. But no, he didn't do the pinch and zoom to look right. behind the picture, though. Like, is, is that? <laughs> is that them in the back? Because, you know, it's like Kelly and Molly and them in the front. Too real. And you see Daniel not even looking at the camera. And but did he I not, saw it. Did I not say in the last week's episode when, we, when you were like, why do people stalk each other's social media? And I was mm-hmm. like, because you want to see if you see an elbow. <laughs> Her purse, his shoe in the background, and he done found her straight up, just her face and his face right there in the but back. But that don't that does not make any sense because see, like I said, I've been on Lawrence's side for most of this, but you decided to leave her. You're right, and that means if she decides to fuck around with anybody, the it's nigga she cheated on you with or not, she can do that because mm-hmm. you decided to end the relationship. So you being in your feelings now off of her Facebook is kind of like when Issa was in her feelings looking at Tasha's <laughs> everything and being ridiculous. Right. Like don't you don't have no why right she to cheated. that. Yeah, they're tripping. They're both tripping. And then look at how you did Tasha. You really don't have no right to be in your feelings. Yo, he but... didn't even call Tasha. Do we even hear right? from her Right, we didn't even hear from Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just realized. Lawrence really might be a fuck nigga. Like he never called her <laughs> nothing. Even get a text. God Nigga, did you even go damn. back and get your drawers from her house? <laughs> Anything? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, shit. All the while, Issa is at work at a staff meeting, and she's trying to crack a couple of jokes with Frida, you know, about their boss and the phrases she always says all the time. And Frida is just shut down. Not there. The relationship, the camaraderie between the two of them is gone. A she's breakup. Not, yeah. she's had, this is her second breakup of the year. <laughs> <laughs> she is not at all receptive. And so after the meeting breaks, Issa approaches Frida in the break room and is like, look, clearly something is wrong. So Which let's just blew talk about my it. mind. I was like, is she Since when really you... this oblivious that she's going to be like, clearly something is wrong? Has, Frida's been mad about this for like three months. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's all she's been talking right. about. Right. Ever since Mr. Gaines started on the whole, like, black kids only thing, Frida has had an issue like, with clearly, it. Like, clearly. Like, from jump. So I was so, we, I was weirded out that Issa was kind of acting dumb about this. I was surprised that she actually was brave enough to confront her because that's normally something she only does in her fantasies. But I guess she's not really afraid of Frida at the yeah, same right. time. That should have been a, a, a rap <laughs> cipher. <Right. laughs> she was like, what is your issue, girl? Like, And so they end up having, you know, a... A brief but real conversation about race and racism and how it is uh, affecting the situation in particular. Right. And Issa's like, black people can't really be racist. And and, and Frida's like, okay, but, you know, it kind of depends on the situation. You know, if the black people are the ones in a position of power and they are discriminating against somebody else, then that is what it is. And, and Issa's like, well, bitch, nobody asked you to be, like, literal. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, is funny stop, stop making sense. She's like, uh, so you just go be, so you just go give the literal definition. And Frida was like, uh, yes, yes. Just, that's what I'm gonna do. With gains. <laughs> Still, I was just trying to make the best out of the situation. It seemed like you were trying to help yourself more than. The- do you know how many racist ass gains types there are out there? And truthfully, black people can't really be racist like that. So. Yes, they can. Racism is about having the power to manipulate a situation against someone. Oh, so you're just going to be literal? Yes. It must be nice to have the privilege to choose to be upset over this. So you're saying I can never call out when someone of color is doing something wrong? Kind of. That's not fair. Well, that's the world we live in. Maybe it is. I just expected more from you. Like, Frida's making it clear in this scene that she's not going to just let it go. Right. Issa's going to have to say something. And I feel, I don't know, I kind of, it's another situation where I see both sides of what's going on here. Right, because Issa said to her, well, it must be nice to have the privilege Mm -hmm. of deciding, like, when you want to be frustrated with a situation, which I totally understood because, in a way, yes, there's a part of Issa that I think she's just trying to 
create a successful program so her boss can get off of her back. Right. But I do think she genuinely wants this program to work, too, you mm-hmm. know, and the kids to get something out of it. And I get her point of, like, listen, I'm just trying to, like, do the best I can with what we have. But Frida's right, too. Mr. Gaines is being, you know, a right. total, p- totally prejudiced Absolutely by not allowing all the students. Yeah. So, right, the fact that he's even hyping it up the way he is, like, as a thing for the black kids and deliberately funding, funneling black kids into the program is an issue. But Issa just didn't really want to deal with it because, again, as black people, we have to ignore the realities of racism a lot. Right. Just to cope with the world. Right. So Issa take or Issa, Frida taking this, like, so dearly and so to heart is, like, understandable and admirable but when you don't have to face the everyday effects of racism it can be really easy to act you know that dramatic about it like girl yeah it's fucked up but in the grand scheme of racism what mr Gaines is doing that's I she see was like, where you know how many Mr. Gaines are in the world. That's right, right. right. It's, it's tough. It's it a is. tough one. It's a tough one to deal with because you're putting it's it's black people versus Latinos in a situation where ultimately white people are still the ones controlling the system. Right. But you've got which these is why two, we're in this position. Right. In the first which place. is why we're in this position in the first place. But you have two minority groups kind of battling against each other with a white girl coming in, you know, trying to point out what's fair and right. It's like, okay, Daenerys, nobody asked you. <laughs> Not Daenerys. <laughs> you know I'm up on Game of Thrones now, friend. <laughs> Listen, mother of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked you and Dracarys to come through here. <laughs> I <laughs> know you did it. <laughs> no, but you know what? That's so real. Because yeah. these black and Latino students are fighting for this underfunded ass program mm-hmm. to begin with because right. of you. So and you God can't come in here the... playing the savior, having the savior complex. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, of course, there are so many black and Latino students in these school systems who are just like, you know, being put in the middle of, of these identities. And so it's a, there's a lot to consider in this situation. But I again, I see both sides. I see I where they're too. both coming from. Like, you want to do good in a school that really needs We Got Child's Help. Right. And East 41st Street does. Mm-hmm. They need it. But you also want the administration to support all students and want to extend that help or that favor to all the students at the school. Right. And if the school is overwhelmingly Latino, it makes no sense that there are none <laughs> in, you know, the after school programs. So, again, I get it. Oh, but it's just sad to see Frida and Issa be because Frida has always been the easygoing, happy right. white girl. And so to see her so upset, you know, consecutively for like the fourth consecutive this whole episode, season, <laughs> she has been miserable. She was ready to walk out. She hadn't been boiling that water. Right. So I'm <laughs> hoping that they're going to be OK, you know, but she's just <laughs> she's like, listen, I will walk out. But I just I literally just refilled the Keurig. <laughs> she's so. so awkward, too. <laughs> right. So, like perfect so y'all both gonna sit here and be awkward. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave because I just filled it up. I gotta get my coffee. <laughs> Woo, oh, that's God, real. This show. Oh, Dro is in town for Molly's parents' vow renewal. And that's he came nice. early. So that's when I realized, okay, so they grew up across the street from me. Right, other. I knew they were friends for a long time because he said, tell your brothers what's up. Right, but, but this they is literally, whole, literally grew up across the street. That's a whole different ball game. So if y'all grew up together, I'm sure you had a bunch of moments where y'all you thought know? y'all was going to be together. He knew or... about her gate and how her dad used to yell Ooh, at her. Like, that makes me remember cute... all the little boys I grew up with on my block. <laughs> and me and my brother would go out and ride bikes with them all day. Me too. And... My first little boyfriend was named Chachi. Oh my God. <laughs> shout out, shout out to you. I okay. had fun. <laughs> I think mine was named like Derek or Brandon or something, but big ups to Chachi. <laughs> Listen to you I guys sounding it. all normal and civilized. Oh girl, no, he sounds all white bread and, <laughs> and southwestern because it was it was Oklahoma of all places. I'm but so yeah, dead. you know, I I I know what that's like to grow up with a little boy in the neighborhood oh. and y'all just kind of have that, that vibe. Little thing. But yeah, but it's always like, you know, we good. We've always been good. Right. And we gonna always be good. And that's what Dro wants to make sure Molly understands. She cracks a joke about his color contacts face, <laughs> which I found hilarious because I am the exact opposite of attracted to people in color contacts. <laughs> oh, you've always made it clear I've I'm always it's been that way. I've never, <laughs> I've never, ever deterred from that point of view. If I can tell you have on color contacts, I do not like Your unwavering them. hatred. I've never. 
<laughs> Every stray. <laughs> but you know what? I really thought this scene was cute because, first of all, I appreciated that he brought it up mm-hmm. and was like, let's just put this on the table because I don't want to be weird with this. Yeah. And then she very clearly was like, that's not what I see for my life. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And right. then he was like, cool. That's cool, right. Left We've known alone. each other forever, and me and you are going to be cool regardless. And they and went right back to joking. What an adult, responsible way to handle this. what happens when people communicate. When they just talk. See, communication is truly the key. Be honest with your feelings and intentions and listen to what the other person is saying. He wasn't, like, mad. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to talk to you no more because you're not going to give me no pussy. Like, we or were friends for 30 jazz. years. Yeah, right. being awkward and being like, well, I'm about to be out or some corny shit. No ego involved. It was just two cool-ass yeah. people that are like, I respect how you feel. We've been friends forever. I'm still coming to your parents' vow renewal in a tight-ass suit. Tighter than this shirt that I got on right now. <laughs> so no worries. Everything's good between the two of us. And I thought Love that's that a great scene. way to. Loved mm. it. Yeah. Huh. But the quiet before the motherfucking dawn. <laughs> you see, I'm like, love that scene, Love that boy. part. <laughs> so at court, Lawrence is, you know, deep on Daniel's social media, really pulling an Issa from a yes. couple episodes ago with Tasha. Ooh, how the tables turn, I say, you know, honey. sometimes you just got to be real about it. You ain't got nobody to fuck with now. <laughs> That's the thing. See? Who are you using these days? Tasha, I guess Tasha was really done. <laughs> what do they say? Idle time is the devil's playground. Oh, right now, friend. Come on. <laughs> you better read your word. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence has flipped the script. He, he went has. from, you know, playing house and being <laughs> up under uh, Tasha's mattress. Oh, yes. To now being obsessively on Daniel's facebook yeah page. so he's over there not paying any attention at all to the court proceedings <laughs> meanwhile there's a girl in a black lives matter oh shirt trying God, to get out of jury duty <laughs> the judge was like i'm not buying it <laughs> yo when i tell you that shit took me down. <laughs> but don't ask how me many no shit of like us that. have said some <laughs> off the wall shit at jury <laughs> The last Do you time like I went cops? To... No. No. Hell no. <laughs> the all... last time I went, I didn't even make it past like the second <laughs> round. They just got rid of me immediately. But if I had been one of the 12 and they'd ask me, Do you have any feelings about cops? <laughs> Do I? I'd have been like, Have you ever heard of the read? <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, sis shit. did not get excused from jury duty, but uh, <laughs> Lawrence did. But why was he dismissed so quickly? I was like, did I miss Probably because he wasn't paying no attention. The, other, the, attorney, the attorney was like, he's not even he's paying on attention. His fucking phone. He's too worried about his damn phone. So worried about his phone. They didn't even hear himself get right. dismissed. That's what it is. Because he's too pressed over what Daniel is doing with the girl that you let go of. <sighs> Nigga, what? Say it, Crystal. You broke up with her. Now I'm with you. Hurt feelings and all. I'm with you. But if you broke up with her, let her ass go. She can fuck whoever she wants to, nigga. Right? Get over or it. Or man up and go fix it. That's it. You Lawrence. know she wants you back. That's the thing. If she Lawrence was trying, she sent her own best friend a plot and pretend she's and grabbing fake coffee it. outside right. your damn job. <laughs> like, you know she wants you. You could call her and be like, can we talk? And she would come. Well, she ain't got nowhere to come over because you don't oh, live nowhere. Oh, oh. But you could come over to her house. <laughs> Let me stop for the Lord time. <laughs> Come at me. Before the inflatable mattress hive comes at you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pump it up. The, the, I'm just here for the weekend. Huh? <laughs> oh, anyway, Molly is at her parents' house getting ready for the vow renewal. And they're being all gross and romantic and lovey-dovey. It was lovey cute. Dummy, talk, Talking about sex, which is nauseating. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever been in the room when your parents do that, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm feeling her on that. Her brothers walk in and they done bought red solo cups. Like like her daddy said, it's a freak nick. Not freak nick, daddy. <laughs> I said, now look, there are a lot of Negro events, but Freak Nick. The fact that that's what he thought of, though. They got a hundred pack of these red cups, though. Like, why would you buy red plastic cups? Oh, God. For our vow renewal ceremony. Like, you could at least get the clear ones. (laughs) Red ones say there are blunts and black and milds at this party. (laughs) That's what red solo cups say to me. Somebody is smoking. That's why dad was pissed. Right. He was what like, What kind really? of function? <laughs> what kind of 
kind of function you think this is? <laughs> so uh, Molly addresses her brothers as, as Curtis and Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so funny. Ugly's real name is Jerome. But it's good to see Molly interacting with her people. You this know? is the first time we see her with a family, Yeah, right? this is, is her super family. Cute. Yeah, it is. It's nice. Everybody's getting ready for this celebration. And they're teasing each other, but it's in a... In a in a way that I recognize as loving, right? I call it that, right? I feel like my people are like, "This is abusive," <laughs> but that is how me and my cousins, talk. you know, talk to each other. So I get it. Yeah, she called him broke and ashy. And... <laughs> I don't understand how you still get bitches. <laughs> He's all dancing. <laughs> that was cute like, though. Uh, like this. <laughs> Issa's on a date with the Latino man from Tinder. Yes, and before Nico. The, yes, before they even get started, she texts. Shout out to my girl. She texts Daniel to make sure she has some backup dick just in case this one this don't work shit. out. Hotation, she said it. Yeah. And uh, so when she sees him, she realizes he's just as fine as his pictures. She kind of goes into fantasy mode again. And shout out to the Steve Lacey record called oh, Some yes. that is playing because that was smooth. Shout out to Steve Lacey. Shout out to the internet, man. Shout out All to of the their internet. solo projects are so good. They are forever. I can't wait to see them uh, when they come to the city. But yeah. Made me happy to hear him go. Issa, y'all pick some good ass music for uh, this. Yeah, show. the music is consistently on point. Shout out to whoever pointed out to us that Spotify is hosting the playlist. Yes, all after of them every on episode, Spotify. They upload yeah. them. Yeah, so definitely check those out. Yeah, because the music is always amazing. But yeah, she's on this date talking about fuck the gin. I want the horchata. <laughs> no, but wait, before that, did you peep that? When he stood up, he was the same height as he was as when he was sitting. Ooh, <laughs> that's no, she I did that. not. <laughs> Wow, friend! Shout out to you. <laughs> you didn't peep her face. No, I did not. When she, <laughs> when she went to hug him and he stood up and he was the same height as the seat, she was like, "Oh, oh!" She kind of made a face like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm five two, so oh, I don't oh, notice." Right, this ever. isn't your world. I, don't I get ever it. Ever I get notice. it. <laughs> I never noticed, noticed anything related to height. They got it good with you, girl. I'll be like, bruh. Chris said, oh, wait a minute. Wait, oh, no. Uh -uh. you, you were just standing, sitting up. <laughs> that part took me down. I cannot. But they're having a good time. He makes a comment about, you know, catching the Spider-Man reference on her profile, and they get into a Marvel versus DC argument that I don't understand yeah, that because wasn't comic my books. World. Yeah, no, I don't get it. But they're being cute about it. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. having a good rapport. Daniel texts her back and she blows him off like, oh never mind. Some other dick came up. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh... what she meant to say. <laughs> That's what she meant to say. But they're having fun. You know, they they move from the bar to, you know, the little couches and the check comes. Issa fakes reaches for it. Yo, that she... was <laughs> The realist <laughs> who doesn't do the fake pause, like, oh, let me, please, me, what? Me. I am the one scheming all the time to figure out how I can go behind everybody's back and go pay. Oh, the yeah, bill. except for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, ooh, how do I sneak and pay the bill? And nobody can see. Literally, me. this is Crystal at every group <laughs> this dinner. This is my me. This is my MO every time. But Issa <laughs> does a fake grab after he I already do that shit all the time. Because in my mind, I'm like, if you don't pay for this, <laughs> no, you're fucking paying for it. Like, I'm. But I'm like, not please. even gonna do the fake grab because we both know that you're paying for this. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> That's real. To reach no, I do the it. fake pretend. I'll like reach a little bit and then. <laughs> And then when they when they grab it, I'm like, no, are you sure? But then reaching for your wallet, are you sure? No, are you sure? And then they'll and then you get the one dude that'll be like, you know what? Go ahead. And you be like, Damn, I'm never calling you I'm back. I'm never calling you, <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. The real ones are always like, be serious. Right? Like, no, don't put your don't damn wallet down. Me. Don't don't be rude. <laughs> the keepers, that's if how you, you know. Let, if you ask a girl out, come on, man, pay for it. Even don't if I be, ask you out, I mean. If you want to see me again, which maybe this was the... <laughs> he paid anyway, a gentleman. Cute. But when Issa said, you know, I'm not sleepy, let's kick it and have some She's fun. like, I thought we were going to fuck. That's what I read. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, because you paid for the drinks and everything. Look, I'm wearing so. my good dress. 
And, you know, I thought we was vibing, the comic book thing. But he says, you know, I have to get up super early for a flight, which sounds like a common lie, but then says this is a great excuse to do it again. So maybe he really means it. Right. We'll see. Maybe we'll he's see a Nico. pilot. I don't know. Maybe oh. he has to be awake for the flight. Right. Who knows? Because I'm thinking an early flight. Who cares? You can sleep on the plane, but maybe he has to fly the plane. Right. <laughs> Mr. Orchata has to go. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Light on the chata and heavy on the whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that took me down. <laughs> That's a She's good ass a drink, too, so mess. I died. See, see. <laughs> so he blows her off, but he does it in a way that makes her think that, you know, he's interested in seeing her again. So maybe so. We'll see. Uh, she's at work. Issa's at work the next morning and texts Daniel to apologize for missing the night before. And I'm like, okay, sis, taking my whole journey notes. Right. Uh, she says she can make it up. Or he says that she can make it up to him tonight. <laughs> she does her little goofy smile thing again. He got her giggling this whole episode. But, yeah, they're at work on a Saturday for free for this. <laughs> that line was she said too that much. Shit so, so we're coming to work. On a Saturday. For free. For free. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so they're uh, all at work and doing an exercise about, I guess it's like they read out a, a scenario or a question or a challenge, and everybody has to come up with different ways this of dealing so with it. This shit was so problematic. I was like, what? Uh, yeah, everyone this whole is worse scene. than the other. Right, all of the the, the responses get progressively worse. <laughs> and Issa is the only one who assumes that they should just ask the kid about what's going on Hello? in his life before making all these assumptions or calling in authorities or any other kind of crazy. About who's pregnant and who's drugged out. And I mean, this was crazy. A student who was formerly engaged is now talking back and missing assignments. What are some possible underlying causes? Um, uh, okay, so my first thought might be, has something in their home life changed? Okay, um, I'd want to know if any of their parents are affiliated with any organizations. I mean, we're all thinking drugs, right? Are they old enough to get pregnant? Because they're probably pregnant. Maybe instead of assuming, we should just ask them what the hell is going on. Sorry. No, it's the retreat. Honestly, uh, sometimes it's more than one thing. And these are kids. Even adults can have a hard time being honest with themselves about things. I agree with Frida. We're mining a deep vein here. Let's keep digging. Everyone, pair up. Pick a card from the post. The tension between Frida and Issa is still growing, even in that scene. And so when the boss asks everybody to pair off, Frida actually breaks away she from darted. Issa immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And runs off to try to find another partner. And I'm like, okay, so she's serious. Like, she's really not fucking with Issa no Yeah, more. this breakup is real. And you see everyone... <laughs> <laughs> You see everyone looking around, even like, oh shit! Like, like since when do them two right? not work to? Like, I thought the they duo. only liked each other. <laughs> right? That's how you knew. <laughs> right? Everybody's looking around, like, oh, this is crazy. So, uh, Issa ends up partnering with Sarah. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and then Frida and her partner are having that conversation about dreams, and the girl says, "Dreams are just dreams, <laughs> and it's stupid to pursue them. That's why they're dreams." Like, She's like, because if they weren't, they'd be called reality. Like, damn. And Frida's is... like, that's kind of dark. <laughs> She's like, I know. <laughs> As is life. God, that whole part. Oh, man. Issa's <laughs> job. There's just always something going on with that motherfucker. Oh, God. It's a show. <laughs> and so Molly introduces Dro to Lionel. And Lionel gives her that tug on yeah. her arm like, bitch. Introduce because at first she was right being now. right. At first she was being kind of casual about it when he walked up with her parents and everything. But he put his arm around her mm -hmm. and did the whole That's like I'm tug. claiming you yep. thing. So Molly introduces them, but she calls Lionel a mortgage broker. And he that says, was just I'm a marketing consultant, and he laughed like <laughs> I was like ooh. And I'm Ooh, like, wait a minute, so we're no. talking to Lionel? <laughs> I guess we decided a vow room no ceremony. We just couldn't go to that alone. That did kill me, though. So <laughs> I thought she made it clear when she ignored him. No scissor mm -hmm. concert, but then he can come to your parents' right. renewal. I and you're like, right. Just what? like with Lawrence, of all the things to do with somebody who you're just getting to know, why would you invite them to something so intimate? This is such a Lawrence move. And so personal, right? See, this is why it's impossible to cheer for any one person on this show. And then on Bring the back Jared. <laughs> <laughs> on the insecurity hashtag and just the conversation online people were like oh don't act like y'all never brought someone to a family event uh, nigga I have no no, no. no. I don't 
know, that ain't casual. You don't That's meet my mom casual. on the flyby. <laughs> what? Like, maybe you're the type to just introduce everybody to your parents and that's no big not deal I. to you, but I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal for you to meet my family. I have them, whole ass girls. boyfriends and my mom is like, who is that? Like, okay. years later. <laughs> my mom be like, as far as I know, she's been in three relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the other six are back there like, what? <laughs> like, oh, she has a family? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't just be bringing people to family events like that. So to even see Lionel there, she's kind of like, wow. But she fucks up his profession, which is <laughs> embarrassing. It's terrible, girl. But Dro plays it off really nicely. Molly's brother walks up, so he goes off and talks to him. And so it's like... You know, kind of saved by the bell a bit. Because, damn, Molly, how you fucked that up? <laughs> and Lionel was like, well, he's tall and seemed a little insecure. She's like, oh, is he? Like, bitch, you know good and damn well he tall. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to front. <laughs> right. You ain't looking at is his he? fine ass standing right I thought right you there. said you'd known him all his life, girl. What you mean? <laughs> You ain't noticed he was taller than you in all your days. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence is fishing for info about Issa and Daniel with Tiffany's husband, Derek, at the bar. And he starts doing the whole, man, I wonder if she was ever faithful to me, you know? Like maybe she had just been fucking around the whole time and the the issue with Daniel wasn't a one-time thing. And Derek is like... You have to remember that this is Issa. Like, smooth is that the took opposite me of what she down. <laughs> said, when he was like, you know, her? women are slick. He's like, do you do you see how she is at life? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen her dance? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> But, but Lawrence is real. like, no, but that, those are the ones that you got to worry about, the ones that you least expect. And Derek's not buying it. Derek's not buying it. He says, honestly, this whole situation is not on Issa. You were sitting on the couch for two years not working, and you left the door wide open for another man to come through. And Lawrence rightly points out that him being unemployed or depressed or whatever else does not give Issa the right to cheat. Right, but Derek's But Derek like, says, yeah, I'm just but... saying, I understand the attraction, dog. I'm just saying, I get how she got there if she sees a dude doing shit <laughs> on a daily basis See? and you know ambitious working yeah. who do you think she's gonna be drawn to it's just goals human just having goals you know they don't have a to be schedule, as lofty as anyone else's a but bus ride he gets up at a certain time going every day. outside for air i mean <laughs> <laughs> a clean outfit you know the basics his ass imprint is not on my couch <laughs> you know i'm just saying dog of course it's not right a of shower, course it's not you didn't shower, deserve bro. to get cheated on <laughs> I'm just saying I see how she ended up in that situation, which is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. For like, sure. And Lawrence didn't even respond. He was just kind of like, all right. Right. Like, all right. <laughs> Let me I eat mean, my you chips. Got a, you got a point or whatever, but did you have to say it out loud? Kind of like Issa. <laughs> you know that Tiffany come on. isn't out there just, come on. I'm just saying. Come on. Come I'm on. just saying. All right. I thought Issa and I were in it together, but she was out there doing whatever. Honestly, this ain't all on Issa. What? I mean, you spent two years unemployed, not doing shit, letting your woman take care of you. Kind of left the door open. So what, that gives her the right to fuck some other dude? No. But I can see why she'd be attracted to a guy who's out there making things happen. But I wonder if that made him start kind of falling back. Like, all right, I have to be accountable at this point for some of my bullshit. I mean, maybe. We'll see. Because we'll so far, Lawrence has not been very good at, you know, taking responsibility for the wrong that he's done. No, he is he's not. He's good at playing up his victim status. Of course. But he's not very good at taking any responsibility for his part in any of it. So He's a total narcissist. And I mean... We've seen this. Your many girl times. Tasha was not wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh Tasha. Oh God, bless. shout out to the Tasha Hive on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who have been there before quite heard about it. One days. girl was like, would she tweet me? Because I, I said some joke like, oh, nothing serious. So let's just go to my family barbecue. And this girl was like, don't act like it was just Tasha. And then I was like, girl, I'm triggered too. It's okay. We're all hurt, We're sis. all hurt, sis. <laughs> <laughs> this show just had everybody yeah, in Yeah, every episode. It airs on Sunday night. And usually I'll tweet through whatever it episode. It is the best. But people, the conversation keeps going for like four days. Dude, I had to mute the conversation <laughs> on that tweet because people were yelling at me up until this morning. I was like, okay. 
I'm sorry. It gets people in their feelings because niggas have been here before. I didn't cheat on Lauren. That's the thing about Insecure. Everybody has been at least one of these characters before. Right. And I love that, like you said last time, the best part is that you can't be mad at anyone. You can't pick a favorite. You right. can't pick a villain because everybody's a damn mess yes. on this show. Everyone is human as shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, Molly and her brother Curtis are talking before the vow ceremony starts. And uh, Lionel comes up in conversation, and he can tell that she's not really feeling him. Right. And she says, you know, I mean, he's great on paper, and he's all this and that. And Curtis says, you know, it doesn't matter how great a nigga is, you know, in theory, if you just are not feeling him. And he's like, just because he's a good guy does not guarantee that you guys are, A, going to get married, or B, that it'll even be a good marriage. Mm -hmm. And Molly says, I mean, you married a stripper, so what would you know about it? (laughs) And he was like, I was trapped. (laughs) I love Kim. (laughs) But I was trapped. (laughs) But there's no guarantee that anybody you meet will grant you the relationship that your parents have which has always been the gold standard in Molly's mind what her which mom and daddy have come to see come tumbling yeah. down right so she's always held that in like in the highest regard mm-hmm. and so that's been you know something that matters a lot to her in this whole conversation but her brother is just saying you know this guy seems great that doesn't mean you're gonna be happy like mom and daddy were so right. it's no point in being with somebody you don't really feel like that hmm. you see the wheels turning in molly's head like, something you might to have a think point. about Issa is still at the work retreat in the bathroom wearing a public <laughs> enemy shirt a very dope <laughs> public enemy shirt and she calls her brother to complain about the whole uh, Frida situation, but <laughs> she's like, you remember that girl Amanda Johnson? He said, Samantha Bronson? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, that bitch! <laughs> That's not, neither of those names are her name, Issa. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but she's like, remember how she used to lie about Aladdin and I knew she was lying because I fast forward to the end of the tape and it took me back to me and my brother fighting over VHS tapes in the middle of our living room, man. But you know what was cute? Because I don't have siblings, but I thought it was adorable that she calls him talking about this random ass shit and he's <laughs> just totally playing into the conversation. Right. I'm he's... like, this could only be between siblings. Only between people who grew up in the same house, yes. Because she said Amanda Johnson. He was Johnson... like, what the fuck? Why are you calling me talking about a VHS and Disney? And a who... girl we knew in 92. <laughs> He was just like, yes, I remember. What's up? <laughs> right. So, you know, she she ties it all into Frida and uh, talking about how, you know, no, ain't nobody said we got to leave out all the Latino kids or whatever. Or, you know, this whole conversation. You know, right. Venting her frustrations about Frida and her brother says, well, why are you leaving out all the Latino? And he's just like, well, nobody said all. And he's like, but you, you, you just, literally you just said all. You just said all. And you can never admit when you're wrong. And Issa's like, oh. <laughs> but it's true. Issa has a very hard time admitting when she has fucked up. And I don't that's know what it is. That's been the problem all along. And what, she, what does she do? That's she her problem with Frida. Fu- that's her problem with Lawrence, with everyone. Yes. She hangs the phone up. Never say never, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I know. She I know her brother was like, what the fuck <laughs> was this conversation? <laughs> what was this conversation? She hangs up the phone to check Snapchat. And she has a snap from Neighbor Bay. Hey, now. Okay, what you talking Eddie. about what you doing? <laughs> sitting on his couch, not doing a damn thing. He's sitting in a video chat and she's texting him back. Which I low key love. I'm like, yeah, you you put forth the effort. I'm gonna just write. You <laughs> get on video. <laughs> I'm not gonna do all that. But then he asks her, you oh, know, for God. a video, and she, why wouldn't you go back in the stall for this? I don't understand Issa. this part. <laughs> Titties all on the sink. Her you coworker don't know what walked in like nasty, gross. <laughs> She's like, oh, you know, just screening for breast cancer. Like, bitch. <laughs> nobody takes a video for breast cancer. <laughs> With their bra on. <laughs> With their bra on. Like, this is a touching thing. Oh, girl. And you would do it at home, like, laying down on the bed. Like, girl. If you want to take nasty videos at work, at least go in a stall. Fuck what you thinking about. And and you don't send videos to Neighbor Bay. And we don't send videos. Girl. We don't send videos girl. to niggas we have no intention of, like, having a connection with. Sis. No one does that. I don't. Mm, well, I well, certainly let's do not. Say, right. let's, you know what? I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. Do you? you better. <laughs> 
more people are in the insecurity hashtag like, let me tell you. <laughs> I have my own truth, friend. <laughs> Respect my agency. That's right. I got you, girl. <laughs> At the Val Renewal, Molly is being called over by her auntie. Shout out to the DJ. He got a, you dropped a bomb on me playing in the background. I'm like, yes. <laughs> this is old nigga music right here. I love it. But her 80s like, oh, yeah, you brought you a man this time, dark and lovely. I was so oh, dead at her yes. aunt's and their thirsty asses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Molly's auntie's. <laughs> and then the one who's like, oh, don't call her aunt. Don't call her auntie. That's like your great auntie. Don't act like we're the same age. <laughs> Dead. It's too many of us like that. Too many of us know what that is like. But one of her aunts mentions, you know, I didn't think your parents were going to make it five years, much less 35 years Ooh. after the shit your daddy put my sister Ooh. through. And Ooh, this part. And Molly's face just... Right. And so her cousin is like, Mama, come on. Like, like, like that, this ain't like the time, <laughs> the place. <laughs> <laughs> but Aunt Kiki is still going on talking about you. What was that wench's name? And so Molly looking like, bitch, what? Her whole world. And I'm thinking, damn, Aunt Kiki, of all the times and places you could have done this at the Val Renault. I ceremony. know. But you know what? I was low key so happy that this conversation is being brought up on the show because I always talk about how much we, ro- we romanticize mm-hmm. our grandparents and our, our parents, parents yep. and all of their shitty ass relationships just because they were really good at hiding things. Yeah. I mean, and to a certain degree, they should have. Kids should not know the ins and outs that of everything too. that's going on because but- they weren't putting it on Facebook statuses. (laughs) They weren't subtweeting. Your mama wasn't going on Facebook Live. (laughs) Your mom wasn't putting memes about your dad being no good and treating her like she's an option when she's a priority. (laughs) Okay, friend. You better touch from that hurt and bring it up. (laughs) I pulled out from my meme arsenal. Oh, Lord. So, yeah, Molly is sitting over there looking kind of devastated and shocked at the same time. And I'm thinking, this won't end well. Meanwhile, Issa is in the car and texting niggas on Tinder. I'm like, who's this one? Somebody called Potential Bay, and oh. she's not paying any attention. Oh, my God. He sends her a dick pic, and she ends up <laughs> driving directly into the car in front of her. <laughs> and I'm thinking, it yes, HBO. It was a HBO. very nice dick, though. I understand. It, I, mean, I, she, I mean, she was temporarily distracted. <laughs> She said, wait, oh, oh. She was like, oh, 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 oh. Yo, when that airbag popped up, <laughs> this is too much. Too it much. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. So she hits the car in front of her and she's like, oh, shit. So thank you, HBO, for the reminder to never text and drive. Or Don't text and sex drive, Sex and drive. <laughs> a PSA. Don't Tinder and drive. <laughs> a PSA in the middle of a dick pic. Threw I'm you dead. off. This yes. show's too real. Speaking of PSAs, I don't know if you saw, but Prentice, uh, the showrunner for Insecure said Mm -hmm. that the condom issue oh I did see he was like uh, you know we're just assuming in the writer's room that condoms are being used right and so I was like okay that explains a lot that's the answer to that (laughs) thank god because I (laughs) thought maybe it was going to be a story arc right right? (laughs) so I'm glad to know no surprise babies y'all yes we should be assuming that all these people are using condoms you know I hope we're there as a culture and I get it where condom usage is assumed right Right. because I was thinking about it and most shows on TV Mm -hmm. are the same way yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely. guess it's just an assumption. But and I saw people were like, yeah, but we, you know, this is an important platform. You shouldn't assume. It's like a whole back and forth. But he said it. That's you niggas know to use condoms by now. He said it. Even Princess said, don't use this show as a compass for that uh, either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what? those no, are his exact don't do words. Don't that, y'all. What? He's like, it's a damn show. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So Molly catches up with her brother um, in the kitchen talking about him about the whole situation that her aunt revealed to her. And he already knew about it. Which was wild. Yeah, wild to me. Um, But she's flipping out and her parents can hear her screaming and cursing. And so they come in the kitchen talking about, can you please, you know, lower your voice? What are you doing? And Molly says, how could you cheat on mom? And their faces... And the mom's like, listen, it was a long time ago. She jumps to daddy's defense immediately. 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 But Molly is really upset. She's like, I don't understand how you could take him back. And so her mom is trying to explain things. And Molly's just like, I'm not trying to hear it. They worked through it. They worked through it? What the fuck is that even? So mom knew. And she's cool with it? Molly, calm down. Fuck that. Fuck this ceremony. Fuck all this fake ass shit. Molly, lower your voice, please. Molly, how could you cheat on mom? 
Listen. It was uh, a long time ago. Why would you stay? Molly, he made a mistake. Listen, honey. No, no. I can't. I, honey. No. no. She walks right past Lionel on her way out of the house, and Dro and Lionel are doing the back and forth look, kind of like, you got her, you got her. Like, that part killed me, though. The I've known her since like, she was a child. Bro, a child. You don't, she don't even know what she's she doing for even, a living, okay? I mean, like, she, I got this. I, she walked right past you and didn't say nothing. You asked her if she was okay, and she just walked like she didn't know who you was. So I'm going to go get her. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. That was awkward as shit. It was, because he opened the door and everything, let her in, and they went and got in on the drive. And they drove away. So y'all about to, so you just about to go, so you're going to leave your man at your parents' Valentine's ceremony? Poor Lino. So funny. That was terrible. (laughs) This is what happens when you invite the wrong people to intimate family gatherings. (laughs) Uh, If you don't care about someone, don't invite them to something. How about that? So Issa's with her busted-ass car, which is her fault again, because she was looking at dicks on the internet instead of paying attention to where she was going. And the tow truck driver oh, was he like... He made it so much worse. He's like, oh, this is bad. This is bad. You never want the mechanic or the tow truck guy to be like, oh, this is awful. Girl. So she's, you know, pretty sad and feeling kind of desperate, I guess, because she calls Daniel to say that she won't make it to his house tonight. And, of course, he offers to come pick her up. Oh, and being he a looked good genuinely guy. concerned. Yeah, Did like, are you face? okay? Yeah. And all this, I'm thinking, oh, no. And why then do she's you like, care? I could just get the driver to take me. And he was like, Issa, come on now. And I love that when he was like, don't play with me. Like, right. where are you? I'm coming to get you right now. No hesitation. Yes. Though, Not no, are you sure? But, like, girl, quit playing. I'm about to be the chief of camp, uh, chief of staff of his campaign. Okay. I'm starting to like Daniel now. But see, Daniel is like fucking Daniel. up. Daniel's fucking up because Issa told him from the beginning, this is just some fuck thing. You're yeah, right. The game is this the game. This is not He's all that up. extra. Right. It's not all that. And yet, here you are catching feelings, which is, it's, again, I see both sides of the situation because Daniel's being a great guy, but also... Issa should have never called him in that situation. Don't, He's not your man. He is not you're your man. You're creating an emotional thread in a situation that you're trying to say is not serious. This is the same problem that everybody's having. This is Lawrence. This is Tasha. This right. is uh, Molly now with yes. Lionel. Come on, folks. This is Issa's problem. You want to have a fuck buddy situation? You want to have a hoe phase? Great. But you got to treat these niggas like hoes. You don't call on hoes when you need help. You call <laughs> friends, family, people who... Stick to the time frame, Yes, girl. yes. This is a wrong move for a fuck buddy situation. But on the other hand, Lawrence is at home getting drunk, looking on her Facebook, <laughs> blocking her. Yeah. No, but the way that this scene was shot... So hurt. He's just at he's the just desk sitting at the in desk. the big screen. <laughs> With that big ass monitor, not the at fucking thirty two inch monitor staring at her fucking Facebook page. I was like, drinking. This shit's too real though. That little obsession that happens when you don't get your way yeah. or your ego is hurt. Oh, I hate that phase, but we all go through yeah, it. Yeah, God bless my ex. He's going through that right now. <laughs> God bless you, bro. You are gonna make it. I pulled through. You are gonna be all right. You are gonna be all right, my nigga. But he's hovering around that block button. <laughs> He's hovering right over that block. Like, I can't look at... The thing about Facebook block is it is probably the most comprehensive of all the social media blocks. You block somebody on Facebook and they may as well have died. You will not see their comments. Yo, you can't see shit on not the A. Not shit. Nothing. That's so real. I love it so much. So Lawrence is in his feelings, clearly behind Issa, but he'll be all right. Dro and Molly are in the car and she feels stupid because all this time she's been looking for a man like her dad and a marriage like her parents. And all the while, their relationship is flawed, too. And I guess Molly is just now realizing this. And I remember the moment that I realized that about my parents. And I was probably, you know, older than most people expect, like in my mid-20s or so. But I was like, wait a minute. So they're just... Human. Regular human beings? <laughs> what? That shit was wild, though. Like... I'm not saying that she should have assumed her dad was a fuckboy. Like, no one's going to assume that about their dad. But right. for her to think that they've just had this seamless, flawless, perfect marriage. I mean, 35 years is a long that's a time. That's a long, and there's a lot of growing and mistakes. And, you know, it seems like she just never really asked questions. And the fact that her brother knew all the stuff, I wonder why that is. Right. I'm really trying to figure out how Curtis knew about the cheating and Molly did. Maybe everybody 
was like, keep it from Molly because you know how she is. Let her live in her fucking <laughs> pri- her princess fairy tale. Yes, y'all. her fantasy world where people don't ever fuck up or make any mistakes. So, you know, Joe is saying, you know, you're not stupid. You're just trying to be happy and be loved. And that's a good thing. Oh, Joe. Joe's a good friend. He's cute, too. He is in a goofy, oh. Drake kind of way. <laughs> like, not like you have a goofy face, but more like you look like you play too much. Oh. You look like you always joking around <laughs> and having practical jokes or jumping out the closet and you're saying right, boo when you know I'm scared. they're cute because they're both silly. Right, yeah. but cute. Right, it but works. still cute and right. can easily turn that into charming or sexy. Mm-hmm. So Joe's appeal is just oozing all over the place because in a, in a time when Molly is really sensitive and her emotions are really raw, he is being that for her. Right. And not trying to like slide his hand up her thigh or nothing like that but genuinely just taking her home you know i'm being here as a friend so <sighs> nice <laughs> as a friend so daniel shows up to Issa's uh car accident um and they hug and he's talking about you know you know i got you that was the line she got triggered and, and she, she was said, like oh no oh no, you're not supposed wait to wait a minute me. <laughs> you're not supposed to got me <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, but her face changed, her face. and then she totally killed the vibe of this whole interaction. She did. She's just like, we're on the same page, right? Like, we're just doing fucking thing, around. I'm doing my thing. We're both still seeing other people, and the and the thing about this scene is that Issa's trying to be the person that we all say we want. Right. We all say that if somebody wants a casual situation, be open and honest about that. And so it's great that she's doing it. But when you've already caught feelings for somebody, them being open, honest about the fact that they don't have those feelings for you is going to hurt, even though they're saying it with the nicest of intentions. Right. And so he kind of bristles a little bit, but he's like, yeah, you know, we're good on the same page. But you page. saw the hurt all Yeah, you see the hurt. Face. And then he doesn't, he he makes the move to go open her door for her. And, and then, then he realizes, like, like, oh, shit. yeah, no, you good. You got it right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not opening the door. Like, oh, Issa. It's enough that I'm here. And so... Yeah, you had to hurt his feelings, but he volunteered for his feelings to be hurt. You're right. He did. This is the reverse of Tasha. It so is. We this can't, is Tasha we can't and just Lawrence. Point fingers at her. You're this right. This is Tasha and Lawrence all over again, and it it's is. the exact same advice. Issa, if you're sad or lonely or need a ride home, then bitch, call an Uber or a Lyft like everybody else and go home. And the fact that another thing to point out is that this is the second time around that she's yes. fucking with his head. Yes. The last time she did the same thing, he caught feelings, went to her job, See? and then she said, you just an itch I had to scratch. And that's what I'm saying. You can't have a whole phase or a whole relationship or something casual with somebody that has feelings for you Likes or you. you have feelings for or both. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work out. He already had feelings for you, so the fact that y'all are fucking again means it's very easy for those feelings to come right back up. Ooh, listen to me read myself. <laughs> yourself crystal at yourself (laughs) i'm over here talking like bitch will you will you take your own advice though (laughs) i remember when they were in the at molly's house uh prepping the flowers for the renewal yeah she was telling molly like whatever we always bounce back we always figure it out but it's like come on and so when she did the whole you know we're just fucking around right no strings attached thing He's clearly in his feelings about it, but I don't know if he's going to be brave enough or strong enough to say, I can't continue to see you anymore. Right. He should. If you are in your feelings and you know somebody is saying to you, this is a strictly casual situation, and you're still in your feelings, then you need to be big enough to cut it off. If right. They Maybe he does. Hopefully he does. Hopefully this yeah, is a wake-up call where he's like, you know what? I already see where this shit's headed, and I'm not going there. Yeah, anymore. and I don't want Daniel to get his feelings hurt. He seems like a good guy. He's you know, so all things too. considered. Right. I don't want him to get hurt behind Issa, who is, you know, going after <laughs> King Latino and, and Neighbor <laughs> Bay. <laughs> And potential bay. So, you know, he's not opening the door because chivalry is for relationships. And you made it clear that that's not what you, me and you have. So, <laughs> all right. Molly walk. Molly is being walked to her front door by Dro. He lets her into her building. And she asks how he's going to get home. He says he'll call a lift. Because, you know, they drove her car, obviously. Right. And he does the grown man thing and walks away. But my girl <sighs> grabs his arm. She's like, my daddy's a fuck boy. Lawrence is a fuck boy. 
Derek's a fuck boy. Chad's a fuck. You know what? Lionel's come in. boring. Lionel's boring. Might as, as fuck. well come on scratch in. this itch I've come had all down. my life. Come on down. <laughs> and the very next shot is Drove's long, light skinned ass on top of her, <laughs> giving her the business. <laughs> do you think she would have let that happen if she hadn't found that out about her dad? No, I do not. Damn, that's crazy. I think the fantasy of the perfect marriage was shattered. And she said, if my parents don't have it, Drove and Candace don't have it. And, and it don't exist. Exist. And if it's an open marriage and I'm not, you know, betraying my sister in vagina hood or whatever. Then, <laughs> who she still didn't talk to about Who she it. still hasn't talked to. And so, again, Drew might be lying about the whole open relationship thing. I truly hope not. But I just don't think it's a good idea to sleep with a close personal friend like that. Especially somebody who is committed to another person. It just... And where is Candace? Well, Notice Candace she's is always gone. She's at a bachelorette party in Cabo, <laughs> which I thought Dro was saying, like, you know, she's in Cabo at a bachelorette party. Doing her thing, So she's Molly. definitely going to be fucking around, <laughs> you know? Now Morse code. Yes. Like, <laughs> she's getting some dick. <laughs> and so... Cabo getting dick. Any other questions? <laughs> what you doing after? <laughs> so I'm, I'm honestly, I'm hoping that Candace comes back and she sees Molly and they have a conversation. She's like, girl, Dro told me I don't care. I really that hope that's what it is. Me too. Because otherwise, I think Molly's going to feel really guilty about this. But yeah, seeing that her parents don't have the ideal relationship like she thought just made her say, fuck it all. I might as well fuck him. Who cares? Right. Oh, oh. girl. <laughs> so, Fran, predictions for the next episode? My predictions keep getting shot in the fucking, I mean, every, I, I mean, mean, you said quick, Lawrence too. and Tasha was going to be together. I said they would be together. Now he didn't even call her. And we didn't even, we didn't even see Tasha we in this episode. See Tasha. Then I said that Lisa and Daniel were going to start something up. And in the beginning of the episode, I was like, oh, look at me being right. <laughs> and but by the end. <laughs> The rotation one. Yeah. So that's not it. I mean, now that we see Lawrence being obsessive, I'm predicting that he is going to give in and he is going to hit Issa up and be like, we got to talk. Especially after the conversation he had with Derek. I'm hoping some accountability starts kicking in where he realizes that, yes, it was wrong that she cheated, Mm -hmm. but that it wasn't entirely her fault why the relationship went downhill. And I think because Issa is so adamant about this whole tation, but we got to remember she did want him back. Yeah, she did. So I, I don't think that that door is closed. And I'm wondering if Ooh. if something, you know, I'm wondering if he's going to catch it in time before the door closes fully. Yeah, you, you do have to catch it in time There's if you, definitely if you a regret window. it. But I feel like that window is closing. You think? I do. I think by the time Lawrence asks, Issa to take him back or if they can work on it she's gonna be like mm, really kind of having fun with the dick buffet these <laughs> days <laughs> I do but I don't mm, I don't know I think we're gonna continue to see Molly doing more um, as far as dating is concerned I'm excited to see what happens with her and Quentin when she spends more time in Chicago you keep seeing it for them but I I'm do. seeing it for her and Dro. Joe's married though. So He's not going to leave Candace and Molly's not going to be a sister wife. Molly was talking Spanish with his parents. <laughs> She was. She was over there walking away with her brother. Come on, this integration is too good. Oh, too friend. Good. <laughs> oh, friend. We'll You're see. so pure. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see. In the meantime, make sure you check the hashtag insecurity. Keep up with the conversation every week, every episode. We are diving in and talking to you guys about this mess and how it hurts everybody's feelings. Yo, you guys are funny as shit We're all on triggered the every Sunday night. <laughs> and thank you for keeping us on the charts. Please keep uh, rating us on Apple Podcasts and wherever you listen to your favorite podcast because we are there. Yes, and don't forget you can hear me every week on The Read with Kid Fury. And you can listen to me every week on The Friend Zone with Dustin Ross and Asante Smith. And before we leave this week, big congratulations to Issa and the whole cast and crew for being renewed for season three. Yay! Burr, 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 burr. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is better than friends. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> so excited to see where the story goes next season. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. More mess, more mess. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you next week. Insecurity is a Loudspeaker Studios production. Our producer is Matt Raz. Our editor is Ty Worley. 
Our social media coordinator is Barry. And don't forget to follow Loudspeakers on social media. We're Ellison Podcasts on Twitter or Loudspeakers Network on Facebook and Instagram. 